All right. Good evening, everybody. It's we have just about a minute before six thirty, so we'll just wait a minute or two, and then we'll get going. Yeah. All right. Good evening, everybody. And uh, thank you for joining us for our August installment of our reopening town halls. Um, so tonight we have with us Mr. Reinhardt, myself, Dan Ersig, uh, Dr. Lisa Jane Kapler, and uh, Gwendolyn Rohrbeck, our new uh, director of curriculum and instruction. Um, so as always, uh, we'd ask that you put uh, any questions or comments in the chat. We'll read them and then we'll answer them as best we can. Uh, we'll be taking notes along the way so that we can follow up with anything that we may need to follow up with as always. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Reinhardt uh, for a brief update. Uh, uh, thanks, Dan. I want to, first of all, I want to welcome everybody. Uh, welcome everybody back from our, our month off. Uh, just to update on after the last time we met, we had gone over um, how we were going to use our federal funding uh, with the pandemic aid and some of the CARES Act money. Uh, so we had a very successful summer. Um, with our recruiting and our hiring. Um, we do have, as we had hoped, we have a, so we'll have a social worker in every building. As you know, we added two additional social workers. Um, in the past, there was two split before the four elementaries. Uh, it was made clear through the parents and the community surveys that one of the things they wanted was more social emotional support for this fall. So this year we will have a um, social worker in every building. Um, we wanted to help support our staff with our student growth and our student learning loss. So we did um, add two literacy coaches and two math coaches to our K-6. Uh, they're also in place and they will also be in place for the first day of school. Uh, we do have the additional guidance counselor at the high school. Um, and we did move the one guidance counselor from part-time to full-time. Uh, we wanted a, more of a team approach at the high school. Uh, plus the parents had asked for more help with that transition five, six going into middle school. So um, we're really happy that, that those things are in place. Uh, we were very happy with how our summer went. Um, did I miss any anything additional? We had Staff? the summer school for yeah. Do, yeah, that would, we, one of the things uh, this year was our extended school year. So this year we started our K six academy. Uh, it was three weeks, uh, four days a week. It was extremely successful. That's the information we're getting back so far. Um, we've already talked to some staff about how we can enrich um, and add to that for next summer. So we're very excited about how that went. We also provided uh, staffing educational support for the boys and girls club this summer. Um, our feedback from that was that was extremely successful. Uh, so we're really happy with that. Uh, we're also looking at how we can um, extend and enrich our junior and senior high summer schools, which were more of our traditional, um, but we're also very, very successful. Also, um, as you know, as part of the federal money, uh, we are extending our school day. 
So we will have staff after school uh, every single day for an hour in the junior high, I believe two hours in um, one hour in the K-6 and two hours in the junior senior high. So we're very, very excited about that. Uh, so that's our opportunities for our students. Uh, we know that they missed a lot of in-person time um, next year. So, you know, we're really excited um, that we're able to uh, afford those additional academic uh, interventions. So as school starts, I'm sure you're building principals. Sorry, Kirk, no one can hear you because you're muted. Oh. No, can you hear me now? Do I have to start over? Yes. Yes. All right, I guess so. Okay, so uh, I'll start with, uh, once again, did you hear Dan's directions about um, putting everything and put all your questions in the chat, which you like we always do, we'll get to as many as we can. I think it's, I think it stopped at the end of when you're talking about the school hours. For oh, school. okay. Back sending the school day. Okay, so um, so we heard about the additional staff because I think somebody said thank you. Um, the extended school day, it'll be for K-6, it'll be an hour. Um, and for junior, senior high, it'll be two hours. There will be transportation provided. Um, so once school starts, I'm sure your building principals will be reaching out to you. And, and I think the last thing I talked about was the addition of the RTI, ELA, and math teacher for junior, senior high support. Um, so we're really excited with, with all of with all of those additions we have of uh, using that federal money to help our students, both academically um, and social emotionally. We know that's gonna be a huge piece of our students. There's been a lot of trauma. There's been a lot of stress in our families and our households. Um, so we're really excited that we'll be able to uh, uh, add these additional supports and form these individual teams right at our buildings. We're thrilled. Um, there's been a lot of precautions, a lot of procedures put in place. I wanna thank Dom, um, Zarella, Dr. Kapler and Dr. Malia. Um, you know, we will have a full slate of fall sports. Um, there'll be stipulations on locker rooms and outside and gear and storing and everything. Um, but we're very excited. We had a very successful spring sport. Our girls won section nine championships. It was an amazing overtime game. So we're thrilled uh, that we'll be having sports this fall. Um, so, you know, we're starting to get back to where we want to be. I'm just thrilled at how successful we were after April 5th when we brought everybody back. Uh, we were able to stay open. Our elementary schools had over 90% attendance, which is great. Our junior and senior high were over 80. So we're really happy to kind of just continue on that model that was so successful in the spring um, and to move us forward. All of the protocols we had in place in the spring will stay in place as far as our cleaning, our disinfecting, um, masking in school, social distancing in classrooms. As you know, it's been reduced to three feet with mask on. Staff will still be six feet. Uh, cafeteria, when they're eating in the cafeteria, it's three feet. They can take their mask off. Um, we are adding extra ventilation to the cafeteria, especially in the high school. The, as you know, the senior high cafeteria doesn't have as many windows or outside ventilation. Uh, we're very fortunate. Uh, most of our elementary cafeterias have rather high ceilings plus uh, lots of windows. So we're really thrilled that we're going to start getting back to some of the traditions and more normalcy in our, in our academic school day. Um, so we're pretty much picking off where we left off um, with the addition of hopefully all of our students back 100% five days a week and our extended school day and more of our activities um, and clubs picking up. Anything that I missed anybody wants to add? No, we just had a question about, about the extended school hours. Is it for everyone or extracurricular? So there's going to be two different things. One's going to be, we, sh we should be bringing back some more of our extracurricular activities in general, um, but we're also adding staff to be after school for targeted in intervention. Yes. Um, so students will be identified and then, you know, contact will, 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 be, will be made with parents to see if there can be some kind of arrangement where the kids for students can stay after school and work on targeted skills uh, to close some gaps. Yeah. Optional. Is it optional? Same on extended school day. Yeah. So that would be optional in terms of, you know, have to be able to coordinate it with, with your own schedules. 
Um, Go ahead. How will busing look with full capacity? Um, busing, the, the rules are the same as we ended with last year. Windows have to be open, masks have to be on. You come in, you alternate seats, um, starting from the back to the front. Once the bus is full, um, once again, you'll have two people in a seat, um, but they'll be only they'll be in that those seats the shortest distance. Um, the guidance has, on that has not changed as long as the students have their mask on and the windows are open. Um, the buses, and even on a normal day, there's not a lot of buses that are full. Um, we'll probably have more people on, but yes, school will be five days a week. And once again, I want to thank the parents that transported their children last year. Um, that effort was truly amazing. I know we had a couple of glitches the first couple of days with traffic, um, but that really helped us get as many students back um, as early as we did. Uh, what is being done to mitigate high temperatures in schools on the upper floors? There's nothing we can really do. I know they changed some of the air conditioning policies on rooms that had air conditionings in. Is that true, Dr. Kapler? Yes. So we do have some that are in. Uh, we, we have given our staff and our administration the flexibility to move students during those times. So if the room is hot or there's not enough um, airflow, find a different part of the building. Um, so that we can go outside. When students are outside, they don't have their, have their mask on. So, you know, we are asking our staff um, to use those other spaces on the campuses that may not be as hot. Uh, will students be able to use lockers? So we started having that conversation. I actually put a survey out today to the other superintendents. The county is about split. So I did talk to Mr. Reed and, and Ms. Vale about that. Right now, we're going to start the school with no lockers. We're going to see how that goes. Once again, we ended the school year so well with not having to pivot to being closed. Um, but I know, I know parents have asked about that. So we are gonna look at how many lockers we have. Can we space the lockers out um, based on how many students have requested lockers? The biggest concern with lockers is not so much the cleaning of the lockers, it's more the congregating in the hall. Um, but I know that's come up. Um, so it, uh, Mr. Reed and Ms. And Ms. Vale have both reached out to me and they're gonna start to look and see what that would see. Look like the main thing is that we just wanna, we wanna be open and we wanna stay open. Uh, my child had to be a walker due to returning from remote and no room on the bus. Will they be forced to walker again? No. No. No, so we're, go ahead. When we're planning for everybody to come back 100% in person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, will children need to have Chromebooks again and bring back and forth? And yes, temperatures in the upper schools of the, were very real concern. So right now, there's no requirement to bring Chromebooks back and forth. Um, we don't have enough for everyone to be a one-to-one -one device. We will be sending out another survey, which is actually part of our state reporting. Um, as you know, the state has given approval for the, the snow pilot again. So we will be using our emergency slash snow days first. Um, but if we can pivot to remote, it does allow us to save our academic calendar. So like last year um, in the spring, there was a time when it would have been a snow day, but instead we pivoted to 100% remote. So we do wanna make sure that families uh, do have access. Um, so if we do pivot to 100% remote, we're guaranteeing our students still have access to an equal opportunity. Will BOCES be five days a week? I haven't heard that it's not. Tim, can you answer that? Yeah, hi. I, uh, I have not heard anything otherwise. I, mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything about the um, cohorting um, of doing uh, the one day instruction. The last uh, correspondence that I had with BOCES was it, it was every day business as usual. Yeah. I agree, that's the last that I had heard. And Mr. Reinhardt, BOCES special ed programs are five days a week with the full schedule. There was a conversation about reducing hours for that, the special ed programs there, but they're regular time again. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Dan. Uh, will there be the same format this year to switch to remote learning if an entire class is exposed? Will Chromebooks be issued to all elementary and junior high students again? So you want to talk a little bit about the, the, the quarantine is a lot different this year, right, Dr. Yeah, Kepler? So quarantining this year, our guidance is with them three feet apart. And if they have their masks on the whole time, then you do not have to quarantine anyone except for the person who's positive. If they were eating next to each other, then you would have to quarantine the people that are just around that person, but not the whole class. Yeah, so the amount of people being quarantined this year should be drastically reduced. And as a Chromebooks, we are not issuing them to everyone, but we will be sending out a survey to make sure um, that there's at least one device per household. We wanna make sure the Chromebooks and the devices are here because our hope is that we're spending most of our time this school year in person. 
Uh, will contact tracing remain in place? Yes, it's still in place right now. Carrying books, I think. Uh, uh, can kids not have to carry so many books with no lockers? My poor kid was carrying a backpack heavier than they are. Um, then we, do we know what grade? We can find out about books. And like I said, I know that Mr. Reed and Ms. Vale are working on lockers. But we do have students that do have, for some reason, happen to have a lot of lockers or storage of, of items. Um, I'll go back. Yeah. Uh, the Delta variant is new. Is there any thought given to remote options? Not this year. This year is 100% five days a week in, in school. I believe with the I believe with the with the layering that we put in, and the job that our staff and students did last spring, um, I don't want to jinx ourselves, but we did, I think as as a whole as a community, we did an amazing job of staying open, students following practices and policies. Um, so that that's our goal this year. Thank you for being proactive about the temperature situation. Um, Will they be using the lunchroom and going out of the classroom for specials? Yes. Yeah, so this year, um, we are looking at the going out to the lunchroom for our students. Um, and we are looking at those opportunities for students um, to leave their classroom for their specials. And I know that the elementary principals are preparing a letter, and that'll probably be going out next week or the week after. I know they sent me a draft. Okay. Uh, the next question in reference to our reopening is, um, how will masking be enforced among the student body? How will staff tasked with reinforcing mask mandates be supported? Um, like I said, the students last year were amazing. Um, I don't think we had a single issue with masks. I mean, the students were great. The staff were great. Um, we had summer school again this year. I mean, everybody's great. I mean, the goal is everybody on this call tonight wants our students in person five days a week. And that's done by all of us working together as a team and a family. Everything we did last year, we proved that we can be open and we can be successful. We just need to work together. Um, you know, we have practice. I know that everybody's not happy with all the decisions that I've made, um, but I've made those decisions for the safety of our students, for our staff and for their families. Um, I want us open, we need our students in place. Um, that's why we hired the additional social workers and psychologists and, and academic staff to help our students, you know, for the, the things they've lost both academically and social emotionally over the last 18 months. And that's gonna happen um, by all of us working together and based on how last year went, um, I, have, I have the utmost confidence in that. What happens when there's a positive? What is the protocol going to be? So it's the same as last year. Um, we get contacted usually by a parent or the Board of Health, and then we have to investigate. We go to the teacher, we find out where the windows open, where people wearing masks, then we start going backwards. We have to go back 48 hours also. So we have to try to see, you know, if it's in the high school, it's a little harder because you have to go through multiple um, classrooms. Um, and then we have to contact the Board of Health with anyone that we feel is a contact, then they contact those people. Um, and it just goes from there. Mm -hmm. If the vaccines become available to children, do you plan on requiring it at any point to attend school? I mean, that decision is above us. I, I don't see that happening, but what do you think got down the road, Dr. Kapler? I mean, there's talk of it, but that, that will be out of our hands. Yeah, that will be more of a that state. That will be a mandate. That won't be us making that decision. Can students bring their own laptops to school? Yes, they can. The guest network will still be uh, remain intact from years prior. Uh, when it comes to younger kids bringing in all the stuff they need to bring in for the school year, Will there be a day before school starts where they can drop off materials in their classrooms so they don't have to carry so much the first day? I don't know if that's possible. That is a good idea. Yeah. I don't know if we can do that this year, but I know that I think that's a great idea. Maybe they could just bring in a little bit at a time. Yeah, bring in a little bit. Of those, I mean, those first, the first day is a half day. Mm -hmm. um, my, my goal for that first couple of days of school, even the first couple of weeks, is for us to help our students learn to be students again. Um, we're going to have students that have been out of school for over a year. I really think it's important for us to build relationships with our students and our faculty, um, go through the protocols again. So, you know, if they don't have everything the first day, I think they're going to be okay. I think the most important thing is they're there. 
I mean, the most important thing that is brought into school every day is our children. So, um, but I do like that idea if that's something we can do in the future. Yeah. Um, can you speak more about the BOCES program that's being offered to Ulster County students who wish to be 100% remote? Uh, in reference to that, we received a notice today that that program will not be running by Ulster BOCES this year. So that is not an option. Um, why can't our school offer a parent survey to see if they want masks optional like other New York schools are doing, which is leading to some choosing masks as optional? Um, well, you know, once again, I reached out to Ulster County DOH. I reached out to our medical director. Um, I have to put policies and not policies, board puts policy, but I have to put programs in place that I think maintain the most safety for most of our students and staff. And I believe at this point, um, <clears throat> the mask, the windows, the social distancing, all of those items, um, none of them in isolation are amazing. But when you add all of those layers together, it keeps our students safer and it keeps our schools open. Um, I really want our students in school. I've talked to a lot of parents over the last year um, and it's not just the academic piece, it's a social emotional piece. Um, it, it, there was nothing worse being a superintendent and somebody who's been in education over 30 years to tell students they can't come to school. Um, the, you add all these layers together and I believe it is the best procedures going forward for us to maintain as many students in school, 100% in person as, as long as possible and as safe as possible for our students and our staff and as well as their families uh, who they go home to. One Chromebook per household is not reasonable if we go fully remote. I agree. Um, we are working on that. Um, I actually met with Mr. Ursic and um, Rocco. Rocco the other day about uh, getting additional Chromebooks. Um, if, if that's something we think we, we can get into. And as the year goes on, if it looks like we may have to pivot more than once um, to get families to have uh, more than one Chromebook, I agree. Uh, I mean, just, you know, in reference to, to last year, so last year we passed out 1,400 Chromebooks roughly, um, and we were able to do that in a relatively quick period of time. Mm -hmm. um, so if, you know, we're getting our indicate, indication that we will have to pivot to remote, we will definitely have a plan in place uh, to pass those out as efficiently as possible. Um, in regards to quarantine, if someone is eating near a positive person but is vaccinated, will they still need to quarantine? No, the regulations now are they would just have to wear a mask for 14 days. Um, if they get symptoms, they would have to stay home. But if they don't get symptoms, no, they just have to wear a mask. They're going to be wearing a mask inside anyway. But if they're outside, they suggest that they wear a mask for 14 days. Um, what about quarantine due to exposure on bus? Is it irrelevant since students will be masked? Right now, it says that they wouldn't have to be. Right. Just going back to the buses, they'll be masked and be increased ventilation through the windows being open as well. Given the rapid spread of the Delta variant and how it's affecting children this time, is there an option for elementary students to do full-time remote learning? At this time, there is not. We, our focus needs to be all our resources on, on students that, that are, are, in, are in school. Um, and that, and that's, I think that's the place we're gonna go. I think we're gonna be safe. Um, if it gets to the point where there is a rapid spread, um, we will pivot 100% remote. Um, it was very challenging last year. I mean, I think our staff did an amazing job um, but it is very difficult when you've got a portion of your class in front of you and a portion of the class at home um, to provide that equal education to, to both sectors. Um, and our goal this year is to, you know, to, to get that learning loss, to work with our students on growth. Um, and we think that best happens by our students being in school. Will schedules be posted to the parent portal or just sent by mail? <clears throat> Excuse me. So the parent portal is, is we, we want to transition to the parent portal being our primary means of communication for schedules progress reports, as well as report cards. Um, so we, if you haven't already, we encourage you to, to make your account for the parent portal. Um, that's where we will post all that information. Could there be a way to try the lockers and just reiterate that there's no congregating? Those backpacks are jammed with heavy books and supplies all day. I think mean, that's a good point. I know Tim and Ginger are on, so thank you. Beth. Uh, will all the desks have plexiglass to protect the kids inside the classroom? No, um, it's, it's not. It's not. It's not a. Re not a rec Lisa, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, right now it's not um, required. Um, if parents want their child to have one, we would supply one. But right now, it's not recommended. Um, how are mass breaks handled in the high school, especially in warm, hot, uh, humid Hudson Valley weather? Um, it's handled the same way they did last year. Some teachers do have the opportunity to go outside. 
Um, I know the class periods are only 40 some minutes, but it'll be handled the same way it was in the spring. And once again, if the room is hot, um, the administration and the staff do have the opportunity um, to move that class to a better location. Does each textbook have online access? If so, this would help with lightening the load in backpacks. A lot of them do, but I yeah. don't know if all of them do, but usually the teachers will tell the students okay. if they are. Yep. Uh, what happens if parents do not have their kids tested if they have been exposed? Any changes? If they're if they are at immediate contact, then they would they would just have to stay out the whole time and until you know it would be the ten days or fourteen days if you uh, if you got exposed. Okay. Is there a way to test out of that exposure uh, out of that quarantine? No. So not regardless, if not if you're quarantined by the county. Um, you did a great job last year. Yes, the Delta variant did exist in June, and I think the remote option should be considered. Uh, our next question dealing with a reopening. Uh, our students and staff are great with masking, but have there been some, but there have been some parent disruptions that affect our staff at the end of the school year. How will they be supported when confronted by an angry parent? Um, well, I guess my thing is I always assume the best of everybody. I think we're gonna have a great opening to the school year. Um, if, if there's an, an issue with a, with a procedure or a policy or a rule that is put in place by the district, I would hope that parent would reach out to me um, and not have an incident that happens at school. Um, the, the, what we have put in place, we believe is the best for all of our students. Um, I will support my teachers. Um, and I, I don't want this to become an issue where, you know, there's so much disruption that we have to pivot to remote. Um, you know, if there's an issue or a concern over something that I put in place, I'm here every day and I do everything I, I, the best I can to answer phone calls and emails within 24 hours. Um, but I put things in place with my team here and with, with medical assistance and asking people questions that I think is the best to keep our students in school and to keep them safe. Um, so I would hope there would not be a confrontation. Um, if there is a question or concern, I would hope it'd be handled um, with myself and that parent. The situation last year was completely different than now. Has the spread of COVID in schools reopening in the Southern US been considered? Um, it's been considered. I think that's why we're going very slow. Um, that's why you know we're, we're, we're sticking with the mask. We're sticking with the three feet. We're, stick, we're adding extra ventilation to our cafeterias. We bought more filters for every nurse's office. We're adding filter uh, ventilators, uh, stand-up ventilators to the locker rooms. Um, we're being very strict on our procedures and policies for athletics as far as how many can change in the locker room at a time. Um, you know, I would like to bring lockers back, but that is part of the reason why we're going slow. Um, we are watching those numbers. Um, and that's why we're put, we're keeping all of the um, mitigating layers that we had in, in the spring, we're keeping in place uh, because we do, we don't want to go backwards. What are the options for parents who cannot pull their children out of school and homeschool and who do not want to expose family members who may be immune compromised? Will there be a remote option is basically what I'm asking. As of right now, no. Um, if there is a medical or concern, be please reach out to uh, Dr. Kapler's office. Additionally, what are the repercussions for families and staff members who act in harmful ways, meaning in the classrooms, school while they have COVID? Finally, will there be weekly PCR testing for unvaccinated district employees? I'm not sure what the first question, I mean, I don't know if there's any legal thing I could do if somebody purposely shows up with COVID and doesn't tell anybody. I'm not sure what we can do. I'd hope people wouldn't do that. And as far as testing, I think Dan would know more about that. Yeah, the, the, so the county has uh, been awarded a $4 million grant for testing. Uh, we're waiting more specifics from that program as to exactly how it could be carried out and handled. Um, there will be a voluntary survey that will be shared with staff so that they can know or provide information to their, their nurse as to whether they've been vaccinated or not. That will obviously help with the tracing process as well. Um, we would also encourage uh, families, if you're comfortable, if your child has been vaccinated, to share the information with the building nurse so that she has that on file. Uh, will help with contact tracing as well. Uh, is there a vaccine mandate for teachers? Uh, no, there is not. Thank you for listening to science.
Uh, let's, let's say my child gets infected with COVID and needs to quarantine for 14 days. How will my child receive daily instruction? So we actually met with uh, teacher leadership yesterday and we're looking at ways of offering tutoring after school and could that tutoring be remote? Um, because I mean, we know that that was a tough thing last year um, when a student had to be out for 14 days. So we, we met with them yesterday to put that plan in place. Um, you know, we have a student, five students in a room um, that have to be quarantined. Um, is there a way we could do some type of virtual tutoring after school? Um, they like that idea. They're gonna they're gonna flush it out. They're gonna get back to us. They're gonna meet with Ms. Rohrbeck, Mr. Ersik, and myself and see if that's possible. Um, so we do want to find a way. I know in the in the past, if a child's been sick, you know they get to work when they come back. But we know 14 days could be a lot. Um, so we are looking at a way for um, a staff to be put in touch with those students. Can lunch be held outside since the students have to remove their masks when they eat? I know that I don't think go outside the high school or not. I, we can I can ask the uh, elementary. I know the big thing is getting the food and stuff. Is there a reason they can't eat outside, Dr. Kapler? No, we just don't have any. They have to sit on the ground. Yeah, they have to sit on the ground. So, but what they do is they eat and then they get to go right outside. Right? Is that how it works? Yep. Uh, safe. Uh, lockers are an issue. It needs to be reconsidered. Uh, understand it's trying, but the time between classes has not changed. Students have the opportunity to co to congregate regardless of lockers. Mm -hmm. um, carrying all books and a laptop is not responsible in high school. Any flexibility would be appreciated as these kids switch classes do not sit in the same classroom all day. Okay. Uh, when will students get their schedules? Uh, schedules are usually distributed, I believe, the week before school starts. Uh, when will the eighth grade schedule supply list come out? Ms. Vale, do you want to talk about the supply list? Am I good? Yeah, you're awesome. All right. Thanks. Um, you know, I think the lockers, like I said, I've been in contact with Mr. Reinhardt and Mr. Reed and Mr. Molino. Mr. Molino did draw up and present to Ms. Kapler um, a folded in locker plan that we're still taking a look at. Um, and as far as schedules go, I know that our guidance counselors just returned to work this week. So they're trying to fix all the conflicts um, and things like that. So I do believe, um, I don't wanna speak for Mr. Reed, but I think we talked last year that we will have student schedules ready um, to be placed on the parent portal before school begins. The date is when guidance is able to hammer out all those conflicts. Um, that are going on and some different changes and requests and things that happened over the summer. As far as the supply list went, um, the eighth grade supply list, I believe, did go out in the mail with the report card um, at the end of the seventh grade. I thought Ms. Lambert did do that. But right now, um, you know, we did do a supply list based on lockers being available. So I'm in dialogue with the teachers so that they understand um, just like they did last year, they knew the lockers were not in play. Any child that did walk around laden with books and binders um, really didn't have to do that um, at the junior high level. I won't speak to other levels. We, we checked with all the teachers. Um, also, two textbooks are sometimes supplied or the textbook work is saved for home and they have the textbook at home and they do the other you know, work in the building. I hope I answered that one question, but those are the things that were on my mind as I'm listening. Yeah. Uh, did you also want to mention about the seventh grade orientation? Yeah, I actually was going to text you about that. So <laughs> I had to go ahead. The seventh grade orientation was planned for next Wednesday, the 25th, due to unforeseen circumstances um, with building logistics. We had to go ahead and move that to Tuesday, August 31st. I did do a text blast and a new letter did get dropped in the mail today to go home to the families. It's also posted on the website, the junior high website. So maybe we can make sure Ms. Conte can get that out as well on the district website. So it just got moved from next Wednesday, the 25th to Tuesday, the 31st. They will um, receive a hard copy of their schedule and staff is excited to do eight different stations so they can learn about the junior high and what's expected from them. Thank you. Um, so will windows need to stay open all year? What are we doing to keep students warm in the winter, if so? So unfortunately, yeah, if it stays, um, if we stay above a low level, we're gonna have to keep the windows open. Um, now that we can 
be closer together. I think that they can try to have the windows maybe not where someone's seated. I would, I would say layers is going to be the way to go. They did up the heat. So they, even though they have the window open, they upped the heat last year. So that's probably what's going to happen again. Right. So, but I mean, just the way our heating system works is it draw some of them draw air cold air from the outside and warm it up. Um, and they were bringing in a lot more outside air than in the past. Um, are masks still able to be removed outside? Can students at elementary age get daily playground time this year? Not just outside time, but the ability to climb up and down equipment. Yes. Last year, at the end of the year, they were actually on the equipment. So it'll be the same. And yes, they can remove their masks outside. My daughter had an exposure last year and was told to quarantine by the school nurse, but we were never contacted by the DOH. Yes, uh, the DOH will tell you that they had problems keeping up with it. Uh, what is the approximate student vaccination percentage at the junior senior high schools? What's the approximate staff vaccination rate at each school building? Uh, so the uh, it's we don't have an, an exact uh, estimate of the vaccination percentage for students at the high schools uh, because they're not required to report it. Um, we obviously shared several events that uh, students can attend. Um, and then in terms of staff, I believe our instructional staff, uh, the teachers are about 75%, if not more, based on um, signups from, from that, you know, that were out from my office. Um, the, the district as a whole, um, I'm hoping to get a better estimate as to, to the exact number of everybody else uh, in, the, in, in the next coming weeks. Are parents who want the remote option going to have a voice or just be told it's not happening? Don't parents deserve a voice in this decision? The decision was made by, based on logistics. Um, to offer a remote option like we did last year with the hybrid with half the students in and half the students out, it, it, it was a tremendous burden not only on the staff, but the, stu the students that were in class every day. Um, our goal this year, like I said, is 100% of our students in person. Uh, we believe we have provided a safe environment um, I think we also have an obligation to continually provide the best academic uh, environment for all of our students. Um, trying to do the some students sitting in front of the students, uh, some students in front of the teacher and some home. It was something we had to do last year to maintain what we were doing. I think this year, uh, the best option is for our students to be in school with our teachers. Uh, if there is a medical issue and a need for a 504, I, I do ask that you reach out um, to Dr. Kapler, uh, if there's a concern about your child being in school. Are masks going to be required outside during recess and PE again? I hope not. No, unless yeah. PE is inside, they don't have to wear them. Uh, will social distancing be encouraged outside without masks? Will there be spacing during mealtime? There'll be the same spacing during mealtime. And we, we, we encourage social distancing all the time. Um, even, you know, we talk to our coaches. Even when, even when they're getting ready, you know, we always want our students any chance they can outside, you're, always, you're much safer. That's why we like our students taking our students outside. Congregating is, is one of the most dangerous things we can do. So, you know, when, even when you're outside, if you don't have to congregate, don't. Um, our next question in relationship to the reopening is, last year my daughter said that she was rushed outside and not enough time to eat when buying. Are we being mindful of this? Yes, I know we already had a meeting, I know Ginger, we had a meeting talking about the lines and, and the timing of the lines. So I know the conversation is has taken place um, at the high school. If that does happen, please, you know, please let the building principal, the teacher know um, that your child is not getting enough time to eat. As you know, the federal lunch program was extended. So all students are eligible for breakfast and lunch again this year. So we definitely want to make sure our students are eating um, so they're healthy and ready to learn. Thank you for posting the uh, link for the um, supply list in the chat. Uh, with full student body returning, what's the distance plan during mealtime when students must remove masks? Um, they're going to they be three feet. The desks are all going to be faced in the same direction. Sometimes it will be desks facing each other. We are going to use barriers, and we are increasing the ventilation in the cafeterias. Uh, once again, can you explain how you intend to keep the unvaccinated children under the age of 12 safe due to the fact that the Delta variant is prevalent at this time and affecting them more than ever? I'm going to do, we're going to do, we're going to put in place all the protocols that we're doing now and the procedures and the, the layers of mitigation. I'm going to do everything we can to keep, I, I can't guarantee, um, but we're, I, I, have, I trust in my staff 
and our families that we're going to do everything we can to keep everybody safe. Uh, my student is in fourth grade and starting band. How will that be impacted? So right now, the guidance on band and chorus is 12 feet apart. So most likely, they're going to have to do small groups, like all the flutes together and clarinets. Um, they do have to wear masks, and there has to be covering on the instruments. So the band teachers will be discussing that. They've been doing that up in the high school since last year. So you'll be getting more information about that. Uh, is there a new student orientation elementary? Uh, so for that, I would encourage you to reach out to your building leader or the, uh, the guidance office if they're at the junior or senior high level. If a child was remote last year and will now need to take the bus to school, who do we contact regarding confirmation of busing? Will busing be information be available with student schedules as in years past? Yes, the uh, schedule times with the estimated pickup time will be shared. Um, they do encourage you to be out there like 10 minutes prior to the first couple of days so that you kind of get the routine of the bus. Uh, on the junior senior high school, are Chromebooks, laptops being used regularly in classroom moving forward? There was mention about wanting them to be in school to be used, if I heard correctly. If yes, how does that work? Devices stay in classroom and multiple users per Chromebook, or does a student pick one up upon entry for the use of the day? So I don't. I think they they lifted some of the restrictions on items having to be wiped off in between every time somebody uses them, or was that? Yeah, just at the end of the day. At the end of the day. At the end of the day, everything would be clean. So right now, there are Chromebook carts that uh, staff can sign out and bring to their rooms that they can take the Chromebooks in, and use during the period and return back. Uh, will elementary classes be switching classes this year? Some some of the older classes will. Um, once again, it depends on the structure of the building. I know last year. Some of our sixth grade classes started switching. You know, as you know, we wanted our students to get ready for seventh grade. Um, once again, it depends on the structure of the building, the hallway. We don't want students passing each other unless it's needed. Um, but you know, I'm sure that your building principal will know which classes are actually gonna be switching. How will band classes be in the junior senior high this year? Hi, Dan, uh, this is Tim. Sure. So uh, the last time I spoke with Ms. Trees, uh, we were talking. Um, we're going to be here in the fall. We're going to be um, keep having band practicing outside uh, when possible. When we do have to move indoors, um, it, it, as of right now, we still we have to have a considerable distance between um, students in the band, particularly if they play uh, a woodwind uh, or brass instrument. Um, and I believe it's 12 feet. Um, so it, it'll be very similar to what Mr. Trees was doing last year. And, and that also goes for um, choir also. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Uh, if you're working on after school vir virtual tutoring, would it be possible to offer remote learning option for parents during that time? There's a, there's a difference between offering tutoring for a student who's in school every day and happens to be out either due to an illness um, or a quarantine or a student that's gonna be out for a straight period of time, like for a whole quarter, a whole semester. Uh, the tutoring would be an opportunity to touch base with a teacher, not necessarily their classroom teacher, just to kind of keep them um, during that time they may be out for the five or 10 days. Uh, with all students eligible for free lunch, has staff been increased to meet the need and help with the length of line in elementary schools? We can reach out to the elementary principals and, you know, after those first couple of days and see if um, I mean, we did have most of our students in school last year. I know the elementary's had well over 90% attendance, um, but we can, we can reach out to Sheila and, and, and the elementary principal and see how those lines went, especially now that more elementary students will actually be going to the cafeteria. Uh, will parent-teacher meetings be in person? Can IEP 504 meetings start, beginning, start being in person? Um, so right now, I mean, just in terms of like parent-teacher conference or the open house night, um, we're still waiting to see if that will be virtual or if we'll be in person. We'll make a decision uh, as we get, get, get closer for that. Um, IEP 504 meetings, uh, I would encourage you, you know, if you have a strong preference to, to reach out to the individual facilitating the meeting um, to have a conversation with them about uh, what, what can be done. Um, will school be able to hold events like open house, PTA events, et cetera? We don't know yet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're still, we're, we're still going to kind of wait on that and see decisions. Um, I would, I would kind of tend to think that uh, you know, big ceremonies like the Veterans Day ceremonies and stuff, 
may be on hold again this year unless it could be facilitated outside or something along those lines. Um, but this time we don't have, have a specific answer for that. Um, previous years before COVID, buses were three to a seat and barely any room. How are you meeting the needs of all busing students and distancing them? Are you still only sitting families together? Um, with the new guidance, uh, it does not have to just be families sitting together. Uh, what we do is I'll check with the, our transportation this week and see if we have any buses that are, are, the, are that full last year. Um, even, expect, even assuming everybody needed a seat, we didn't have many that were that full. As you know, some of our buses are fairly empty. Um, it's not just families, um, but we do to reduce the exposure as the first students on sit in the back of the bus, they come from the back of the bus toward the front. And then we start two to a seat from the front to the back with those students being on the bus the, the shortest amount of time. Uh, how will the district address the outspoken employees who feel that school safety protocols aren't necessary? If you have concerns, please reach out to your, your building leader uh, and we will address it as necessary. Uh, if we have personal devices, is it helpful to bring them to school? Uh, students did last year, right? Yeah, I, I would say I would kind of play it by ear and see what works best for, for your child's schedule and classes. Uh, I don't want to say yes or no, because it depends on, on uh, kind of the makeup and the activities going on. Uh, will parents have more access to classrooms this year, such as parties like in the past? Will events be allowed like plays and social events? So as, as far as, you know, we, we're, we're going to start the school year limiting, um, limiting visitation like we ended the school year. Once again, you know, as people are brought up, we, we do have the Delta variant. We want to open up slowly um, as we start changing protocols. We want to make sure the numbers in our area are staying down. We don't want to have to pivot. We don't want to have to go to remote. Um, you know, that's why we're keeping so many protocols in place and not adding a lot of extras as far as student gathering and different things. We'd like to start offering more things at night, like PTA meetings that are hybrid. I know now we're running some of our meetings, some people in person, some people still remote. Um, but we, we want to go through this slowly. We want to keep watching our numbers. I mean, the summer is going to come to an end. We're going to have Labor Day. Um, so we are going to keep tracking those numbers. Uh, will there be more lunch options in the junior, senior high this year, aside from just hot lunch? Uh, so at the end of last year, they, they brought back salads. Um, we, I, I, we can inquire about that and get more details. I know that there is like a balance in terms of, you know, trying to do it as efficiently as possible. Um, so kids are not waiting in line for long periods of time. Uh, what percentage of positive and or quarantine students will result in pivoting remotely? Um, the pivots last year were based on staff. Um, if we had the staff to keep the building open, we kept the building open. Um, so that, that, that'll be the same thing last year. As you remember, you know, we had times when um, due to staff being quarantined, we would not have enough staff to safely open the building. Um, that's the number I go by. If I can't, you know, the, the principals contact me very early. Um, once we start the contact tracing, um, we try to get that notice out to parents by three o'clock the day before. Um, and that's what we go by. If we can safely open the building, um, that's what we do. Is it okay if we ask our child to use their personal sanitizing wipes on the keyboards or shared Chromebooks before each use? Uh, I'll just get clarification on that. I believe it's okay on the keyboards, but the screens are a little bit more sensitive, I believe. And if that's the case, we can make them available, all right? We can just a special one. Yeah. yeah. Um, if my child is using a device used by another in the prior class for each class during the day, that device needs to be cleaned each and every time. Will there be sanitizing wipes readily available for each class that has their students using a Chromebook in class? Look into that. Is it possible to reduce class size? Ricardi elementary classes are often at a maximum capacity, not conduct conductive to learning or distancing. So all classrooms meet our the three feet minimum uh, social distancing guidelines. How does one initiate homeschooling if remote isn't offered? You would contact um, Jennifer Fellows and she would send a packet and then you would fill that out and send it back to her. And then um, she would go over all that with you. There's a curriculum that you put forward. Uh, I find it hard to believe that you do not have a remote option for 12 and under. I strongly feel there should be protected no matter who has to work harder. Uh, with so many people not getting tests when they should, I feel like the recaps were a false sense of security, but will you be continuing your daily number text updates? Yes. All right. Uh, next question relating to our reopening is, does my child automatically have to be COVID tested if they aren't feeling well? 
No, they they actually get referred to your doctor who makes that decision. Um, they either, according to the Department of Health, they either have to have a negative COVID test, they have to quarantine, or they have to have an alternative diagnosis. So if the doctor gives you an alternative diagnosis, then you're good to go. Uh, my strongest request is to not mandate masks for our children. Besides that, my ask is to please incorporate regular mask breaks because last year there were no, not allowed mass breaks outside of lunchtime and recess, or yeah, uh, that's not enough. Thank you. All right, we'll put that out. Thank you. What's the plan to sanitize classrooms? We had Wednesdays off last year for this. What's the plan this year? Um, we sanitize our classrooms every single day and some classrooms were sanitized during the day. We bought um, remote like, atomizers. Um, some were actually sprayed during the day. Like we had a teacher that there was not a class in there when the periods changed. Um, and they were cleaned every day. Our maintenance and custodial staff did an amazing job last year. Um, you know, we still had, if people remember, we still had staff in the building on Wednesday. So a lot of the cleaning was still done after hours. Um, so our, our cleaning will continue. And once again, you know, our, our staff did an amazing job last year. And, a, and a, also a part of Wednesday last year was the fact that BOCES uh, are, was only on Wednesdays. So in terms of transportation, that, was a, that would be a struggle to bring everybody back on that. Um, isn't going to remote after closing the barn after the door, after the horse has escaped. It may be difficult with logistically, but we're talking about a pandemic that's getting worse as we speak. Um, I can only based on, you know, how well we did in the spring. I mean, there's certain numbers that are high, um, but I think with a lot of more of our staff vaccinated and some of our students vaccinated and with the precautions we have in place, um, I'm confident that we're going to be in school for a good part of this school year. Are you considering Delta is affecting kids and cases are rising everywhere? Your approach, you're approaching this as the original strain. Um, I, I, you know, I talk to our, our medical director multiple times a week and we look at our numbers. We meet as a cabinet multiple times. Um, we, we're treating this as serious as it is. Um, but, you know, like we said last year, you know, we're also weighing uh, the negative impact of our students not being in school, uh, the social emotional stress on the students and their families. Um, you know, we, we still believe as an institute that we can safely bring our students and staff in school and keep them safe, provide them with an in-person education and, and keep the community safe. What's the plan if a child is sick? There's lots of things going around right now. Uh, if they're sick, you shouldn't send them in. Mm -hmm. um, if they get sick at school, they'll, the nurse will evaluate. I mean, you know, it depends on what the sick is. Um, if they have any COVID symptoms, then they do have to be picked up and they are referred to their physician. Is there a level of community transmission that would push to remote? Uh, last year, we based everything on what was happening in school. I mean, what we found last year is when we pivoted, our actual numbers actually went up. We actually had lower rates of positivity when our students were in school. You know, when they're in school, they're wearing their masks, they're following the procedures. Um, those times when we pivoted as a whole, um, we saw that the numbers in the area went up. Well, students have partners in science labs. Yeah, they're, they're sitting at, they should still be three feet apart. Do you have a threshold for school closure due to the positivity rate in the community? No, we do not. I remember last year they talked about the orange and the red zones and the county and the state never got that far. Um, once again, we look at how it affects staffing. Um, if we can safely open our buildings, um, we want them open because we know that's where our students are the safest. Right. I mean, just to reiterate, we're also in constant communication with our district physician and the something. county department of health. Mm -hmm. what? what will yeah. the school do if there are high numbers of parents homeschooling since remote isn't offered? We will continue to do everything we can to support our students that, that are homeschooling and our students that are in person. I believe if you are homeschooling, you are providing instruction, correct? Yes. Yes, in terms of the, the parent would be providing the instruction.
Uh, thank you for working on full-time in-person school plan. It's critical for our children to be in school. We know the highest transmission is community spread, not in schools, and that children are not vulnerable. So this is truly good news, excluding the mask mandate. But I hope that masks go away soon. Will the plexiglass black? Oh, sorry. Will the plexiglass shields still be in place with students in classrooms in the junior senior high? No. No, in classrooms, uh, classes are capped at 24 students. With 24 students, they can they can sit uh, social distancely uh, in the classroom at at a minimum of three feet apart. So uh, the plexiglass barriers do not are not needed at in the junior senior high. What will pick up and drop off look like to distance students? Are temps still going to be taken? Temperatures are not going to be taken. No. Um, pick up and drop off is going to be uh, building specific. Uh, I had a question to me in terms of the river to river, the BOCES program. Um, so the river to river program is not running through BOCES, or not going to be running this year. Um, we, we got a notification today. So the river to river program through BOCES is not an option. Um, somebody put in the chat that the Center for Disease Control and Prevention has been empathetic in stating that uh, children should return to full-time in-person learning in the fall with layer prevention strategies in place. According to the AAP, remote learning highlighted in inequities in education was detrimental to educational attainment of students of all ages and exacerbated the mental health crisis among children and adolescents. Does the curriculum for homeschooling follow in-person instruction? So if somebody chooses to homeschool, they select a program, they provide the documentation to the district, we review it to make sure that the, the appropriate materials are covered, but it is up to the parent to decide and to de deliver the instruction. There is not necessarily guidance provided from the school district as to what, um, how things should be should be taught. Do you want to add anything? No, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Will the district be tapping into federal funds for regular school testing or will testing only be based on contact and symptom con symptom concerns? We won't be doing it. We're waiting for it. We know that the county received how much? A $4 million grant for testing. Um, we're waiting to see how exactly that's going to roll out to, to the schools. Uh, once we get that information, we can uh, relay that information. And right now we can only do uh, screening testing. We cannot do diagnostics. So if somebody has symptoms, we are not allowed to do it. We work under the Department of Health license, but it's only for screening. Uh, is health screening still required for visitors? So yes, anybody to, you know who enters the building will have to fill out the questionnaire. It will be uh, a little shorter this year. Um, it'll be essentially, you know, have you tested positive in the last 14 days? Have you been exposed to anybody? Do you have any symptoms currently? Um, that also brought up a good point that we will, we're working towards having daily screenings that parents would complete prior to students arriving to schools. Um, I'm working on using our infinite campus system to send out an email to parents in the morning. Um, so when that's up and running, we'll have more information on that as well. Uh, should students have temperatures taken at home prior to going to school? Well, they won't have it taken at school unless they, you know, go down to the nurse and they feel sick. Um, I would just say if your child looks or acts like they're under the weather, it would be a good idea to tech, check their temperature. Uh, we had a question. When's the next board meeting? So next board meeting is actually next Tuesday. It's, it's, a, special Tuesday. it's a special board meeting. It's, it's relatively short. Um, there's a few items that have to be on the August board meeting every year before September. Some uh, some business items. Uh, just a question, another follow-up question about lockers. Will they be using lockers in the junior senior high this year? Uh, not to start. Um, our administrators are aware that that is a concern of parents and are looking into that. Can we homeschool until the vaccine is available and then have them return? Yes, you can re-enroll them at any time. If I understand that if a positive COVID student was three feet away from my child and they were both wearing masks, my child will not have to quarantine, but will I still be notified that my child was exposed to a COVID positive student? Yes. 
so homeschooling curriculum is not mirroring in-person instruct instruction. If yes, how will parents know what the learning objectives are in each class? Well, if they want a copy of our curriculum, I'm sure we can share that. Uh, I take the blood ox levels of my employees, which is more accurate than the temp check. Is there any way for any plan for that? It takes two to three seconds, just wondering. No, there is not. Our nurses do have blood oxygen um, sensors, but we would not be doing it to everyone coming in. Uh, how early will these new questionnaires be sent out? Some people work very early and do not have access to internet. Um, so I'm still working with Infinite Campus on getting this implemented. As soon as we uh, have everything established, we will share out what times. Uh, I'm thinking like six o'clock to have the email go out there. That's just kind of thoughts right now. Um, they took temps at the elementary school over the summer, so they're no longer be required for the fall. Correct. I think I just muted her. I think you muted me, Dan. Thank you, Heather. Uh, so it is 7.30. Um, as always, we will stay on for a while. I obviously want to thank everybody who participated tonight. As always, we take a lot of excellent information away and have some follow-up to do on our part. Uh, so we thank you for your time and your, and your input. Um, we will once again stay on. Yeah, I want to thank everybody. We had our reopening task force meeting again this morning. Um, I'm very proud of the work that group's done the last 18 months. Um, a lot of schools in the area actually tapped into our plan on some of the things we did, um, how we got students back in school, how we started our cohort C last year. So I'm really proud of the work the community has done, um, both teaching parents and students and stakeholders. Um, part of the reason why I feel so confident going into this fall. Um, I know we're going to work well together. I know we're going to be respectful to each other. And I think we know how important it is uh, for our students to be in a safe environment, um, both academically, health-wise, and also social emotionally. So I'm, I'm thrilled we were able to bring in the additional staff. Um, I'm looking forward to how this looks this year. I know it's not going to be a typical year, but I think we're, we're going to get a lot of new programming in place um, to help our students and increase our communication, our supports for our families. Uh, we are recording this and we will repost it to our uh, Facebook page or not Facebook page, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, just clarifying about the, the questionnaire, right? So any visitor to the building will have to fill out a questionnaire. We are also working on implementing daily student questionnaires and staff questionnaires. Um, so that will be coming out in the future, the daily questionnaires. Um, I think Ginger can answer a little better about the orientation. I know she did a freshman orientation last year and did it in stages. I'm not sure if Ginger is still on. Our orientation at most should be 165 um, with staff and with our here. Um, parents are not being admitted to the orientation. So it is eight small groups that are being broken up and we are utilizing the classrooms that are already safely spaced in our bigger areas like our cafeteria, our course room, our auditorium and our gymnasium for those stations. So I'll be following all CDC protocols and the students will be wearing masks as will the staff and tour guides. Thank you. Uh, if the daily questionnaire isn't filled out for a student prior to the school day, uh, that can be something that we'll, we'll, we'll monitor. Um, and it, you know, if it does uh, happen, we might just you know, either call home, just check in at home, or talk, touch base with the student during the day.
last year due to the due to COVID, we did not welcome parents to our orientation. I do apologize for any inconvenience. The students are well looked after and they get to walk through the hallways and navigate the hallways um, with their tour groups. And if I'm not mistaken, they visited the end of last year too, correct? So this they is not did like too. They came with their elementary schools as well. Um, last year when we opened for last year's seventh graders, I had to limit it to just the students due to the due to COVID. So we're just following the same steps that we did last year. Uh, the daily questionnaire will be done online. Yeah, so I'm hoping to have it be pushed out to everybody's email, uh, you know, first thing in the morning so people can respond through through the email for that. Uh, sometimes teachers take away recess for behavior. Will that be changed since kids are getting going to need all the fresh air they can get? Yes. I don't know enough about the oxygen centers. We can look into that, Dr. Cooper. We have them at the school, just to put it on each person oh, we, as they came. It'd be in. the same as doing the temp. Yeah, it would be the same as. Okay. Yeah. If not more, right? Could potentially be longer. Yeah, because to get the pulse it oxygen. doesn't go on. With the windows, I agree. There's a fly in here right now. It's driving <laughs> me crazy, and I can't turn my head. We do have screens, but the flies still seem to get in. Yes. Yeah. I think that was a good question. <laughs> okay, well, it's 7.36. I want to once again thank everybody. We had almost 200 people on tonight. I, I appreciate everybody's um, participation and help and support and questions. Um, as always, you know, if you have specific questions for any of us, um, Ms. Rohrbeck, um, Dr. Kapler, Ms. Erskine, myself, or your building principals or staff, please reach out to them. Uh, we do everything we can to get back to everybody, um, you know, as quickly as we can. All right, so with that, good night, and uh, we'll see everybody next month. We'll have another reopening town hall in September to touch base. Thank you.